Right guys, we have new tidbits regarding the iPhone 15 series, so let's delve into it. So let's begin with eSIM support on the iPhone 15 series because obviously with the 14 series, in the US they got rid of the physical SIM tray and went all in on eSIM support for the iPhone. And this change is not rolled out to other countries, but apparently within Europe at least, that's going to be happening with the 15 series. So yes, according to French website Mac Generation, they tell us iPhone 15 models in France are getting rid of the SIM tray. Now, of course, remember the same iPhones sold in France are also sold in other European countries like the UK, Ireland, Germany, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Austria, Poland, the Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, and another dozen countries. And so yeah, basically this report does suggest that at least for most European countries, we're getting eSIM only iPhone 15s. Now I do want to mention that with the iPhone 15 CADs, we did see a SIM tray, so at least a few countries are going to keep that for the time being. But yes, it does make sense that Apple does this. Personally, I would just keep the SIM tray because it really does not give us that many benefits. Yes, Apple says an eSIM is more secure, but to be honest, how often are SIM cards actually being removed from a device? And also remember in the US, in place of the SIM tray, you just have a block of plastic inside the device. And so yes, if Apple's not giving us a bigger battery inside to take advantage of the additional space, I do not want this change. Also, many carriers here in the UK actually don't support eSIM just yet. However, you could argue Apple doing this is going to force carriers to support the standards. And so yes, ultimately I can see Apple doing this. I'm just not a fan of this change. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. Anyways, moving on, talking about the proximity sensor with the 15 series. Apparently that's now going to be integrated in the actual island because with the 14 series, it's actually below the island. And yeah, Quo says it's now on the island to reduce the cost of producing this component. Though he says there should be no changes with the look or the functionality of the islands. Now Quo does say there is a chance this change could give us face ID improvements, but if I'm being honest, I doubt that. Like Quo said before, they're probably using smaller proximity sensors to reduce the cost of building these phones, since now the island's gonna be on the regular models. But hopefully there's no difference with the functionality of these sensors for the most part. And for those wondering what the proximity sensor does, it basically detects when the user holds the iPhone up to their ear and shuts off the screen. So yes, I don't think using a slightly cheaper sensor is going to result in a big difference in the functionality of the tech. Now let's move on to BOE because for years they've been trying to get on Apple's good books and produce new iPhone panels, but every time they keep failing the verification test, and so Apple usually goes back to their regular suppliers, and that's going to be the case with the 15 series once again, because apparently they've had issues with the cutout during initial production, there's been light leakage around the slots, and low inconsistent yields, and so yes, as a result, Apple's pulled BOE from iPhone 15 display orders, and Samsung's now manufacturing their orders instead. In fact, because of this issue, iPhone 15 panel production is beginning one month earlier because BOE was slacking CS. Once again, BOE fails, and this is a shame because BOE could have massively reduced the cost of building these phones, and those savings could have been passed on to us, but now Apple's having to use the more expensive Samsung display for the regular iPhones, and so I doubt we're going to get a price cut with the regular iPhone 15 models. And so it's more likely now we get price hikes with the Pro models to create more differentiation in the lineup, and that's not great news. Anyways, let's now move on to potential GPU upgrades. So pretty credible source, the information gave us details regarding Apple cutting some GPU features from the 14 Pro series last minute. Specifically, Apple planned to introduce ray tracing with the A16 chip. It would have been a big upgrade, but allegedly A16 chips with this GPU upgrade were drawing much more power than expected, and the device was overheating and also the battery life sucked. So yeah, that's why Apple removed this last minute and was forced to go back to a GPU that was very similar to the A15 chip, hence why we saw no big upgrades. Now allegedly because of this massive setback, Apple had restructured the team behind this and moved some managers away from this project and apparently because of this, some key figures that originally were the reason Apple had such an advantage in the chip design space left the company altogether. So yeah, this was 
a massive internal issue that Apple faced. But guys, I'm gonna be honest, I have a feeling this report's exaggerating some details. And while there might have been issues with the GPU, Apple instead thought that, hey, we've already got enough features for the 14 series, let's delay some features for the 15 series, and that included these upgrades to the GPU. Because do remember, Apple did not need to give us a big upgrade with the A16 chip, because number one, they already had a lead over many Android phones on the market, but also the regular models retained the A15 chip, and if I'm being honest, ray tracing's pretty overkill in the first place, I'm happy that Apple did not focus on that, and instead gave us the island, the higher brightness, the camera improvements. But of course, next year, this can be one of the main focuses. And so I think Apple intentionally delayed this feature for the 15 Pro series. And so yeah, this was fully intentional in my opinion. I don't think there was a major setback last minute. Yes, Apple might have had issues, but I think their plan was always to give this to the 15 series instead. But as I said, guys, I'll be honest, I could care less about this. I think chips wise the A12, the A13 was probably peak iPhone performance. Ever since then I've had no performance issues and so yeah while I do appreciate these upgrades I don't think they're gonna be major. Anyways moving on to the periscope lens with the 15 Pro series. Apparently Apple's done some bargaining with their supplier Largan so as a result these lenses are only gonna be four dollars to make and that's actually quite a bit cheaper than the regular price of around five dollars according to Minchi Kuo. So yeah, this is quite a discount, especially when you consider the fact Logan's gonna produce millions of these. And so yes, apparently they're not gonna make that much profit, but Apple's gonna win by having better margins. However, don't go thinking these savings are gonna be passed on to us. Even if Apple gets these good prices, there is a chance we see price hikes. And to be fair to Apple, we don't know how much more expensive the Periscope lens on the 15 Pro is compared to the telephoto lens on the 14 Pro. So this could still be a decent increase over the older components for the 14 series. Anyways, let's delve into your questions. So James N says, will haptic buttons work with the case? And I'm not sure about this. The worst case scenario, cases can just have cutouts on the sides of the device for the haptic buttons. Anyways, that's about it, guys. Tell me your thoughts regarding this in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one.